Hey guys, welcome to 10 2. I'm probably going to make a couple different videos to cover this one. Um, to start off with, uh, we're going to learn how to simplify radical expressions. So an expression is anytime you have things being added, subtracted, numbers, variables, um, pretty much any type of math stuff on your paper that doesn't have an equal sign. The key today is going to be that it does have a radical sign. So a couple rules we have to follow. Um, no radicands, by the way, radicand is the stuff underneath a radical sign, uh, have perfect square factors other than one. That's confusing to explain. We're going to do some examples to show that. So maybe I'll put that C examples. Okay, no radicands, again, the stuff underneath the radical sign, can contain fractions. So uh, like 3 over x. No. Also, no radicals, or the radical sign, the square root sign, can appear in the denominator of a fraction. So like this. That's also a no. So first things first, here's what I would do. I would write down the square numbers. So like 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 becomes 16. I would get these written down, or if you still have your powers pocket guide, And I think I'm only going to take this to 12. Okay, now the numbers on the left are important, but what I'm mostly interested in are these numbers on the right. When I'm given a radical, like on 1a, that 54, what I'm asking myself is, what is the biggest number that can go, that evenly divides inside that 54? Um, Something I should have specified is today we're looking for exact answers of these things being simplified. So if I just try plugging into my calculator the square root of 54, I get 7 point bajillion decimals. Um, no decimals today. We're just not going to do it, but we are going to simplify these. So again, the way that's going to roll is I look on the right side here and I say, what is the biggest number on this column that evenly divides into 54? And the number I see is 9. And again, you want to get the biggest number possible. But none of the others divide evenly. They're all decimals. So I think I have a 9 and a 6. And, oh, I kind of got ahead of myself there. Uh, I recognize that 9 times 6 gives me that 54. And, of course, they're still under the radical sign. Now, something you should know is that if you have two things being multiplied underneath a radical sign, you can um, divide that to be two different, not divide, but separate that, to be two different radicals being multiplied together. You see what I did there? Most people will actually skip this step and go straight to writing it as two different radicals. And the reason that's helpful is because now I look and I go, oh, the square root of 9, I know what that is. By the way, if I don't, it's right here in this little table that we wrote. Um, the square root of 9 is 3. Now, I try doing the square root of 6. First of all, it's not on my list, uh, but if I plug it in anyway, I get 2.44 bajillion decimals. Um, so that's not going to work. I double check one more time. Are there any numbers on this list that will evenly divide into 6? The answer is no, so all you're going to do is just bring it down, and that's your answer. That is your simplified radical, and that's what that first rule is saying. Um, no radicals can have perfect square factors other than one. Okay, you're, Take out any of those other squares that you see. These are weird. Let me do another example. Okay, Like the square root of 180. Again, I'm looking at that list. What numbers go in? Um, if you're not sure, just start dividing. 180 divided by 64, what is that? A decimal? Move on. 180 divided by 81. Okay, you just keep trying until you find the biggest one that goes in. And in this case, it is 36. And 180 divided by 36 is 5. And you see how I skipped that little step there? I immediately went to two different radical signs. And because I know that the square root of 36 is 6, I'm going to bring that down. The square root of 5 does not simplify. 
So that is my final answer. By the way, that is six times the square root of five, but you just don't have to write that multiplication sign. So let's try multiplying uh, a couple radicals together. So what I have now is two radicals. Um, when, in the same way that you were able to separate two things being multiplied, you can combine them back. So this can be written as the square root of five times 10. That gives me the square root of 50. Then if I look at 50 and compare it to my list above, I see that 25 goes into 50. Two times 25 gives me that 50. Those are both radicals. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of two does not simplify. And that's it. Okay, if I wanna try this other one, six times eight is going to be 48. What number evenly goes into 48? I think it's gonna be a 16, what do you think? 16 times three. And the square root of 16 is four. Bring down that root three. And that's my answer. All right, I'll pause here and make another video for the next piece.